Hello, I am joined today by Richard Corbett, Michael Steenbeck Litvin, and Mark Germain. And we're going to be looking at the Gates of the Planets, which is an interesting observation made by Martin Grassinger. And something that um, I had not encountered before today, and Mark brought to my attention. You hadn't either, right? This is kind nope. of new, new yeah. to all of us. Yeah, well, I we started talking about it, so you know it was interesting because I knew you guys in your background. I thought it might be interesting to bring up, or or at least it seemed like I had no choice but to bring it up because <laughs> it just came out. Wow. Um, and uh, Joan's yeah. doing Joan and computer stuff there. Yep. All right, so we're we all go. good. Yep. We're recording. Yes, we are. All right, we are rolling. <laughs> Is it live or Memorex? Memorex. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> All right, um, and everyone's like, what is he talking about? Yeah. <laughs> the people over 40 might get it, all right. Um, all right, so Martin is a long time uh, practitioner of human design. He started out in the near beginnings when Ross started teaching it in the early 90s. And he's been a collaborator with Ra on health, and he's expanded on that in terms of all the different areas uh, in the chart that deal with health. And uh, I found that to be fascinating and pretty good, uh, as I also had gotten years ago a reading from him that kind of tied it together for me also. But he also has another subject that he, from his observations, was looking at how the gates of the planets, like every planet, uh, the sun, the earth, you know, etc., uh, the moon, the, uh, Mercury, Venus, Mars, uh, all that, they each have a, a gate associated with it. Um, and that gate has a certain quality. And there's some gates he has his own take on, and um, what he, in his vast experience, feels they uh, resonate more to for him. And so what he says is, both for the personality and the design, is that if you look at your design and wherever you have uh, your gate, like your sun, all right, it will always um, have the first gate and its qualities as part of what your gate essence is about, the filter through which that gets experienced, in a way, a layer. Because the sun is a yang energy and the first gate is fully yang. It's about being you. It's your, your light, yeah. being in your light, right? It's individual, right? It's mutative. So even though you might have, like he used an example in his lecture where if you have the gate 40, 37 as your sun earth, you know, you would think it's tribal, right? It's very tribal in a sense. Uh, and it is. But it's a very different tribal uh, context when it's in your sun earth because the sun earth positioning skews the influence of the tribe and makes it more individualistic in nature that's really interesting that so that the 4037 is not the same 4037 if, if it's, it's mercury, it, it not it's, part of your you know uh, sun earth if it's moon and mercury or if it's venus and mars or yeah. jupiter and neptune or something mm -hmm. it's going to be very different so yeah. you know so your earth you know, the, you, the gate one, for instance, he says, like, an individual primal force, the inner light, the individual creative direction, the art of creation, the way the energy is shown to the world, that which cannot be compared. So, you know, that's very individual. Oh, so that makes sense to me. And it's all, like you said, it's all that yang energy. It's the creation of who you are in that world. So it's always, no matter what, gate you have it's always has that at least to him he says it always has that uh underneath frequency that it's going through so i'm a gate just like circuits and yeah. you know so i'm gate 46 that's collective but my 46 is going to be i express myself individually you're also a gate 46 46 5 46 6 hmm. and you're also collective abstract you know what i did it was a really interesting practice once i categorized everyone I knew by where their personality sun, what circuitry their personality sun gave us. Mm -hmm. So I put all my abstract people, all my individual, all my integration, all my mm -hmm. 
mm. tribal, all my logic. And that was a really interesting practice, just to see what commonalities I could see. Mm. Um, and you, you can find some. You can definitely find some. But I guess what you're saying is it's going to give it an individualist bent. So it's not just 46 sharing for the sake of sharing. It's also this is how we express ourselves, and this is how we shine in the world, is through yeah. mm. our sharing, mm. through what we share. We mm. can really express and shine and have our creative self-expression through sharing, sharing and experiences. Through the love of the body, the hatred of the body, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the context that is, then you have your, it is collective, right? It is the love, but there's, what, what is it about you, you know, individually? How is that essence boiled down individually? Mm -hmm. How does your light shine in that context? Mm -hmm. How does that creative force of your son shine through yeah. as pushing up. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, Absolutely. and then so gate two would be the earth, would be the grounding. So he says this is the individual receptivity and groundedness, the room where one is grounded in order to receive and to be secure. Uh, unconscious earth, the place around the entire design side, otherwise, uh, oh, he says the unconscious earth is the place to ground the entire design side in. Mm -hmm. So if you want to ground the whole design, your body, the form, is done through the design earth. But that's the keynote. And that is yeah. the keynote. That's the keynote. So otherwise there is an, if you don't ground, he says, through the design side, through the design earth, there's an overall restlessness. Makes sense. So for me that's 58. You guys know your design earth? It's 24. Yeah. yeah. Mine's, mine's 48. Yeah, so it's good just to look at that. And in your chart, anyone, you know, watching, kind of look at that and well, notice 40, how it's... And you can go by the line. So he also breaks it down by the line. And then there you can, you can go so then same. look at the exalted and you can look at the detriment and put that into context too, that range of expression and how that builds... It out. So it's not just the gate. He, he went deeper. Right. For me, it's 58.1. For you, it's 58.2, because mm -hmm. I'm a 5.1 or a 6.2, even mm -hmm. though we have the same incarnation cross. We're born a day apart. But I, I see that you could look at the lines. So, yeah, that's definitely... Um, yeah. You, so you're 58.1. Yeah. So, you know, basically, the energy which fuels the love of life, or a cyclical energy which intermittently fuels the love of life. Either way, it feels the love of life, but sometimes it can wane a little bit. Okay. Yeah, or I can be kind of, you know, um, th that's the sort of detriment of it. But for me, yeah, when I'm really loving improving things and loving making, I mean, this is the root of um, the stream of taste. Well, the, the, you, you know, the Zion Earth is called the love of life, so it says the very uh, s uh, stimulation of the world is the basis of an aesthetic appreciation of its beauty and wonder. Alone or shared with others, this profound inner realization is the key for a joyous harmony with the process of being. The energy which fuels the love of life. Yeah. You know, or, or it's the moon has its face, its moods that will limit joy to an intermittent and cyclical experience, a cyclical energy which intermittently fuels the love of life. Yeah. So it's not fully in your... You're not fully grounded, I guess. That would be the expression of being fully grounded. Therefore, a lot of your design side then would not come through because the earth isn't being balanced or imbalanced or grounded. Hmm. Does that make sense? And there would be a certain uh, restlessness. And Yeah, it's interesting that he's using gate two as the kind of basis of how we interpret the earth. I guess personality and Well, it's yin. Design it's all yin. Yeah. Earth energy is... Right, energy. right. I mean, it makes well. That's also what it's called yeah. in the I Ching. I mean, it's that's one of the yeah. most obvious ones because hexagram one is called heaven, hexagram two is called earth. Yeah. So that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and certainly just from a structure, you know. Uh, it, well, it's also sense. interesting to just see the overlap of the direction of the self with the word grounded. That because mm -hmm. isn't too sometimes called the gate of the direction of the self or whatever. That's like it's like it's I Ching name or something. Mm. Um, mm. But it's cool to just see that as almost a euphemism for groundedness. Mm. 
So yeah. that that so that's what he's looking. So so any other context where you find some, you're always going to have that basically that individuality being expressed in the center. I think that's the important part. Is that it flavors it so you don't even though you have a tribal community channel or you have collective gates or, or whatever, um, it doesn't mean that they're not individual being individually expressed through that greater context of uh, of it being your son earth mm. you know, makes a lot of who's sense. a person yeah. so uh, the moon he says the place where extremes are housed the place to find balance being in tune with our rhythms where one can integrate the phases of the moon's influence the nature of how it's experienced and I added context so it's like uh, 15 where I say yeah and, wow. and that's gate 15. Thank that, you. I didn't that say that. Really but that really changes. But you're describing gate 15, and that yeah. really changes how I think of gate 15, because someone like Von Paul, who's born with his personality sun in gate 15, mm -hmm. now, and it makes sense, it's the Cancer Gemini cusp. Mm -hmm. But it makes me see him as a much more lunar person mm -hmm. in the extremes. Being <laughs> so lunar, I don't usually, I mean, if you just hear extreme, you almost think like extreme sports, like Mars energy or something, mm -hmm. like heroic extremes. But more like extreme moods. Mm -hmm. Wow, the 15, you know, it's not, yeah. we don't think of moody because we think of moody as like 360 yeah. or some individual thing, but making this connection to the moon. So it actually kind of goes both ways in that not only does it help me understand the moon archetype in a new light, it helps me understand gate 15 in a new light. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As being a sort of a lunar gate, regardless of what is activating it. Right. So what's people's moons? 21.6. 21 6 yeah uh, 19 uh, all right so tribal tribal 19 6 sulking so, child so in 20 <laughs> and i don't have your chart in here but i have richards in here it's a line of chaos it's all about control. 21 6 chaos where ineffective action leads to disorder blue line all right so the war of attrition the continuance of legitimate action and the hope of eventually succeeding despite all odds and increasing disorder. For the ego is out of touch. The display of willpower leads to disorder. Or the withdrawal and reliance on inner order in a chaotic situation where the material direction is chaotic, the ego will withdraw and use its power to find an inner order. How funny that that's the detriment. It really goes to show that the exaltation, which is Pluto, is like, at its best, the ego doesn't care. Mm. One iota, and we'll just put up with infinite chaos here. So the chaos, yeah. I guess, being expressed or experienced, or how you deal with this gate, does it have a range of behavior? Well, of course. Expression. Of course. That is, like, maybe even associated with the moon, you know, uh, the, where the moon is at. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the most recent episode of Succession? Uh, no, I'm not okay. behind. Yeah. No spoilers, but I think uh, Kendall has... What is he doing? Has, he doing? <laughs> Kendall has gate uh, <laughs> 21, <laughs> line 6. Somebody <laughs> out there will watch Succession and know what I'm talking about. I've been telling you to watch it. Everyone who wants to watch it, watch watch it, it no spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. Otherwise, we don't see Jonah again. Gate, <laughs> gate 21, line 6. All I've seen Jonah's is doing <laughs> podcasts from the dumpster. Well, it's just, uh, you know... I don't want to in general. Yeah, the hope of eventually succeeding despite all odds and increasing disorder, where the ego is out of touch and the display of willpower leads to disorder. <laughs> yeah. Hoping to succeed against all odds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Jonah, <laughs> well, well, I have your chart too. here, so you can... Well, And then also, it's also on the design side. Yeah. So it, it's on the design side as well. Um, I, obviously, we can recognize the personality side probably a little easier, as most people who are, are perhaps watching or listening to this. Um... So yours is patience, the teacher that never stops being a student. All right, so that's uh, gate two, line three. So even though it's an individual gate, you know, you're here and, and now you're dealing with a, a gate 15, which is collective, uh, logic. Yeah, logical extremes. Yeah, extremes. Extreme. I think of almost as obsessions I mean, extremes. But the, here's an individual gate, yeah. chaos, right? So it's like the dedication to a lifetime of receptivity with the maturity to accept that the process never ends. When connected permanently to gate 14 through the B channel, rewards for service rendered. The recognition that receptivity is a lifelong process or 
um, for the revolutionary patience is a vice. Higher knowing that cannot wait and demands expression. Hmm. Mm. So I could oscillate between being more yes. receptive and being more pushy in saying, I, you know, this, you guys got to know, this is the, this is this, mm. I've channeled this from on, from on high and, or whatever. And they're like, come on, Jonah, you say that every time. Like, Oh, uh, yeah. It's a little bit of like, am I going to be the student or am I going to demand mm. that people, am I going to just express myself even at the wrong time at the inopportune moment? We really um, see the bowl here, too, the bowl that can very obediently carry a, wagon but it was also like the most intractable mammal there is when it's in its other mood and is that yeah. in taurus huh well to get two is in taurus that's what i thought yeah 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 taurus. and then the, the moon also has a strong association with taurus and the bowl or whatever right but, it's exalted in taurus but yeah. so this particular placement now that we're bringing 15 and the extremes into it just moon and gate two with gate 15 how bowl like is that you know i mean with gate 15 as a coloration of the moon yeah, is it? Is, it's yeah. kind of that makes total sense, yeah. right? I mean, it really resonates. Well, it just as a yeah, it's interesting for me to see yeah. when when my moon it has waxed and when it's waned, and it'll kind of go back and forth. Yeah, and I did have an image that I could show the image, if I can find the image. Oh yeah, here it is. I'll just put it on screen because I don't want to put the other stuff on. But this is just the visualization. Bring it up to the camera. Up there. Uh, this is just a visualization of uh, where the gates are activated, designed uh, red and black, so they're both sides, and where those gates of the planets actually align on the body graph. So you can see how interesting that you go from gate 60 up straight up to uh, gate 1, uh, and then all the other gates there in the G are all highlighted to really represent you know, the core nature of direction and love in this biverse and how a lot of that is being um, utilized in this uh, in this uh, yeah configuration of this uh, way of it's looking at it. It's the full G center plus the 60, the 3, and the 14. Yeah, so you have three centers defined. It's right, it looks, it looks, sim it, looks saw, yeah. it looks it looks like it makes sense. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Visually, yeah. for me, as outer vision, as a pattern and projector person with a 4816, this makes sense to me, mm -hmm. the, just from a visual. The vessel plus a two-handed trident. <laughs> yeah. A long trident. So, I mean, this is this is something that, um, you know, this is, this is beautiful in a way. I mean, that's what I look at, something like this. You know, it's not like all, you know, it's like, this is like, when you have things that mean something, they're usually a little tighter, you know? Uh, yeah. It's the, the vessel plus the sphinx plus three more gates. And, mm -hmm. and it's interesting to see what those three are and how the, the 360, of course, being um, the format of individuality and then the 14. And, the and that is, in, 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 in the way, our individuality bringing direction to this creative potential, you know, and... And all these other offshoots that we have here, um, it, make, it really can encapsulate it all really nicely. Like no right? tribal, Just from the, no? yeah, no tribal, no integration. Yeah. You know. yeah, very cool. I like that a lot. Well, let's do some more. Let's look at some other. Well, okay. I've got another elaboration of Gate 15, just the relationship mm -hmm. with uh, plants. You know, the moon and plants, and how plants have a hanging 15. They're the only form yeah. that has hanging 15 only you can't you know they can't have a five but they can yeah. have 15 and there's a long uh history of using the moon to watch plants or harvest during the full to moon water plants or yeah farmers almanacs looking for the full moon planting right, right. during a full moon during a new moon the connection between the plant world and the lunar absolutely the extremes <laughs> Yeah, the extremes that the plants, the extreme diversity of plants, where I kind of thought of it that way of how. Oh, yeah. The gate of extremes, if you think about it, it's six lines, but each line has six colors and six right. tones and five bases. So you end up with, you know, a thousand yeah. bases or more. Yeah, the design of plants. The design of plants. And you end up with a thousand bases per gate or whatever, so gate 15 is no different. And those are kind of like the thousand some odd fundamental archetypes right. of the variations of a rose right. or variations of a insert plant here not just the plants themselves but the variations within mm -hmm. if you get a book of roses you'll see that there's hundreds if not thousands of different named variations mm. so 
kind of interesting. But, you know, they're kind of, each one is kind of archetypally speaking, like one of those color, line, tone, bass, you know, right. line, color, tone, bass combinations. Proliferation of the species. Mm. And again, just to make sure that, uh, you know, this is on both sides, you know, uh, for design and so you look at your gate and the line, what it means and the potential expression of them. Um, my only thought at the time listening to it there, it sounded like a lot of it though, was also addressing the I Ching and the not self person in some aspects of describe when you get to the line level on the I Ching. Because I think sometimes it's, it's made mostly for the not self. And you know, he you said you could write your own I Ching eventually uh, at some time or rewrite it and rewrite That's it. That's something Martin Grassinger has also said is that you know, people read uh, 28 to terminal, terminal disease. Or yeah, is that, that one or is it they, they read, or is it Blaze of Glory 286 or is it one of the others, Blaze of Glory? Yeah. I forget exactly, yeah. but they'll, they'll read some of these. It's not 28 2, that's shaking hands with the devil, but anyway. 18 to something like that they'll read these different lines that are um sound really negative and he pointed out like oh i know a lot of 28 sixes they're not going out in blaze of glory mm -hmm. no yeah you know they're, they found a different way to express that archetype mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a good point and so i just wanted if you were going to look at these things look both sides and how it's emphasized um the other thing all right so we're up to we're up to venus mercury or Mercury. We skip Mercury? Yeah. It's about, all about communication, isn't it? It's yeah. in retrograde right, right now. Oh, that's why we, <laughs> that's, we'll go back to it. That makes a lot of sense, actually. I didn't know this <laughs> All right. Mercury is gate 13. All right? The listener. All right? So, um, gate of healing, position, and communication to our inner world for oneself and what needs to be expressed. The witness that is open with its sensory system to the outer world. Listen to the needs of the body, its own framework, to bring what's appropriate to the inner system for its own homeostasis. Hmm. That's so interesting that Mercury being about communication, it is one of those great bits of wisdom. You're a great listener. I mean, you have also have gate, gate 22, which I'm sure <laughs> helps, the, the graceful listener. But... That good communication is about being a good listener and being very observant and noticing. And then using that to say it's also about healing because it's about listening to the body. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mercury has long been a symbol of the healing arts. Oh, yeah. So, that's pretty so, good. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, like uh, Richard's, do uh, you want to go yours or are you okay? Uh, go for it. Let's hear yours. Huh? Do yours. Oh, all right. Well, okay. No. <laughs> I hear something in the other room. <laughs> 31 uh, 6. So it's uh, application. Actions would match the words and thus guarantee success. Leadership whose expression and action must be one and the same. Or uh, a superficiality in application that borders on hypocrisy and justifiably treated accordingly. The hypocrisy, according to leading in words but not action all right so in terms of health and listening to health um you got to do what's the correct thing to do and yeah, the doing actions have to match match yeah so it's about listening to the body and if it needs certain things then you go take care of it or hypocritically saying You'll superficially do it, but not really follow it. Not really do it. it. Not really. Or you do it, and I'm not doing it, and I have the same thing as you. It's interesting. That <laughs> yeah. In, it's a theory in psychoanalysis that any symptom you have is the body, the unconscious, trying to communicate to you. Mm -hmm. And so Mercury is about listening and communication and understanding through that. And it would also seem like whether it's Louise Hay or like uh, Metaphysical Anatomy, this book mm -hmm. I've been reading by uh, Yvette Rose that it's really that our symptoms are coded messages that we have to listen to. And in this case, it's saying you can either take action to, to kind of you know, remedy it or superficially apply the action and not really do it. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it, but not really. Just kind of. Yeah, so it's, it's about really tuning into our inner oneself. Are we all good? Was it Nancy? 
No, it was a skateboarder. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounded like a paper bag from in here. Yeah. Um, I, th I thought it was his, his cat Nancy playing yeah, with the bag. Sure, yeah. She doesn't really play with much, does she? No, she is. She's more of a chill, chiller. Yeah. Um, so we were just talking about Mercury and healing. Mm -hmm. Do you know your Mercuries? Would you look at either of those? 38. Yeah. 38, the fight of truth. Yeah. Truth fighting for purpose, yeah. right? Right. Um, so, uh, do you, in what line? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if we could even generalize that. Well, I guess it doesn't totally make sense, but the difference in the personality of the design yeah, Mercury. Right yeah. Yeah. Because we can do. Let's do that. Well, I know in Magic Square, it's like what you're saying, like your choice of words and the personality side versus your tone of voice and how the words are conveyed uh, yeah. on the design. But I was wondering if, say you're going to therapy and if the personality of Mercury is how much you're able to notice what the unconscious mind is trying to communicate mm -hmm. versus on the design side, how much you're, I guess it's your unconscious itself. You see, it's, it's, it's hard to understand what's the design Mercury. It, well, my well, 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 like you were saying, it, yeah, it's kind of the unconscious messaging, which can be to yourself. The, the messaging of the body to the mind. It's the, it's just, the voice. I mean, it is... The, yeah, and it's the literal voice. Yeah, yeah I, and, the, 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 the timber, the, the quality of the voice. Yeah, definitely. Um, so my design Mercury, though, would be resistance, 36-1. Crisis, gate of crisis in first line. So the energy and determination to preserve in the face of opposition, the emotional power to handle crisis. All right, so you could deal with whatever crisis, health crisis, come listen and deal with it. Uh, over principled resistance that can rather be selective in resistance and thus less at risk will maintain normal patterns and incur opposition. Resistance to change that will always bring crisis. I guess, yeah, I, I mean, that's true in a general sense rather than just in a health sense, too. But I think health-wise, if you basically, if I've ignored uh, something uh, or resisted doing anything about it, it can have consequences. Mm. So I, I, found that to, I find that to be true for me. I don't know yeah. if that anyone else is. Well, it could health. be right. It could be that on the design side, it's these are things that you can notice happening to your body with your unconscious, with your even your voice. See, it's getting is cracking yeah. or is getting stressed out because it's unable to handle the crisis, or it is able to, and, and so on. I realized also we're talking your chart, so I was actually talking to you about that thirty one six. That it's your thirty one six. Yes. Yeah. What, what, what is my thirty one six? And my third. Uh, yeah, Richard. Yeah. Yeah, Richard is 186 and the 353. Oh, really? So I want to see the 186 for a second because that's one. Right. Buddha. Yeah. That's one that we've talked about before. Stephen, Stephen Mabolito has this one. Anastasia, who comes to our HDHD events. So that's an interesting one, too. That is um, the Bodhisattva gate. It's basically. Um, the body, the, well, basically the potential perfected form through correction. Mm. Or the potential to share the values of the correction with others. Um, it's pretty good either way. <laughs> some, 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 it's a good there's, there's, Well, there's I always some find Buddha head people when, yeah. and then some Buddha of them are head. <laughs> Buddha head people. Yeah. Buddha hood, whatever. No, right. Buddha head. I go with the Buddha head. Um, the Buddha head people. <laughs> I just find it funny because I, I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, these people, Buddha hood. Um, often, uh, the way Ra had pointed out, and I've seen it play out over the years, they really, um, there's certain grace to the Buddha head that they get everything that they need. And a lot of them I've had experience are also 45s. Uh. I'm like, the queen with the 18 six, I'm like, <laughs> this world is your oyster, you know, mm -hmm. the king or queen. With the eighteen six, mm -hmm. I was like, "Holy shit!" The Buddha King, yeah, the yeah, Bodhisattva. The, yeah, the, I mean, I've had that a numerous times, so yeah. I always, I, I always find that interesting. You're the twenty one, just like me. Really. And then your Mercury's connect because you have a thirty six one, you have a thirty five three on the design Mercury's. Mm -hmm. oh. So your design Mercury's. Well, you already have the whole channel, so but it's still. A... You compromise me, Richard. <laughs> bastard. And it's unconscious. I don't mean to. You don't mean to. I, again, there's no blame in that at all, you bastard. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Dirty rat. No <laughs> You're a rat bastard. Anyone else want to go on, or we go on the next planet? We can move on. Yeah, we can go on right. next, yeah. All right. Um, what are we up to? Venus. All right, I knew that, but I just... I know, right. you it seemed like a nice pattern. Toes, yeah. yeah. Um, it's represented by Gate 25. Okay. Innocence, the gate of the blood. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, the unconditional love, hmm. right? So universal our, love. That's our personality Earth. That's our yeah. Earth. Gate 25, that's Venus. So Venus, yeah. wherever Venus is, harmony and balance are needed. The capacity to withstand shock through innocence. Well, that makes so much sense that, sorry, just really quick, that Libra starts on 46 and its polarity is, so is the representation of Venus itself. So it's sort of grounded in Venus. Anyway, mm -hmm. cool. just another interesting connection. It's like we had Taurus in the bowl, now we have Libra, Venus, and yeah, anyway. And we have, yeah, we have hoods and heads also. So that's good. And, um, all love, all right, so love is everything without differentiation because it's universal love, it's unconditional love. Mm -hmm. I have gate 25 as part of the whole channel. Mm -hmm. You know, you have oh, no, that's right. it's definitely true. There's three of us here. You'll, um, you'll that universal love. Um, all love is more important than single love. In relationships, one needs harmony and balance. The place where freedom is needed to allow oneself to live out their innocence. What is needed to have that innocence is the compromise for harmony with others or society too much loss of freedom. Hmm. So it's really about being uh, in alignment with uh, what is important, um, what brings you harmony and balance in the love way. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's and the really capacity to sound shock through innocence. So and it's really about bringing out that innocence quality. So I don't know where anyone's Venus is. They want to talk about their Venus. 29 and, uh, let me see. Mine's in 59.5. Well, I don't, I don't I have think your chart, Mark, but you're 59.5. And also 14, uh, excuse me, 23.2. So you have both, you know, so you're the femme fatale or Casanova. You know, uh, and how does that relate to innocence, uh, your unconditional love, or the love of finding that balance that gives you that harmony? And the freedom to remain innocent and not have to deal with, I mean, there's a lot of, I always think of the innocence of 25 as like remaining uncorrupted, not being corrupted by, by the world or by... Um, mm -hmm. You know, having to uh, sell it or being corrupted by capitalism or corrupted by just any of these things that can corrupt, you know, corrupted by um, using it for personal advantage or using any of these things. It's like your 59.5 is meant to just be pure in its expression and free to express that mm -hmm. without being corrupted by the moralism that would tam tamper it or tamper with it or without having it. You know, it's just kind of, yeah, it's like. Yeah, or, or it's the. Place the of the universal love or the the love of you know just that innocence of being the seducer is seduced you know the innocence of that of being the casanova it's not like you need to try to be the casanova you know it's just you are the casanova well and the power to use in that sense you know what i mean yeah. i think that's where you find the balance is like where do you where do you find your balance in being the seducer? Well, and its and personality, its personality and detriment are either the power of love to break down any barrier, or sexual power in using this power. That would be the sort of the lacking, the, the, the lacking, the lack of the innocence. And, yeah, and so it is going to kind of come out as, and then the freedom from any moral judgment of really being able to use love to break down any barrier. So somebody, yeah. who, it's, this is like a. A real like love as a healing power theme, which makes sense also on the uh, cross of healing to kind of come in with this. So uh, does that have anything of this resonate? Well, I'm I'm taking it all in. I mean, Venus is in its detriment in Gate Twenty Five. That's Aries, so it's that's where this is a little. I'm not trying it's to. A, it's interesting. It yeah, it's opposite of Libra, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. the other thing is also your emotional. 
That's so right. There's it no takes truth right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I, there's, <laughs> there's a slow play going here, and it's brewing. Right. And it's nice. It's going to come out nice in the end. Right. Gate 25 being Venus is a little bit confusing because why would it be in Aries? Why wouldn't it be in Libra? But we're talking about the essence of it. I think it's more the the um, the frequency. He's taking a new framework from the keynoting. I think. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah, and it's the the essence of what it that quality of the gate represents uh, in that planet for that planet. no but that's that's what venus and its detriment in the astrological wheel with gate 25 is it's in its detriment so yeah. it goes against this argument i think well right uh, just like aries would be in its detriment and well it says it or, says yeah. uh uranus oh, is so. the fixating no no, no he's saying that venus itself anywhere in the whole sign of aries is in detriment though not oh uh, okay yeah the whole sign is its detriment so but then see, it might then then you take it for that I mean, you know... It's an interesting question, though, if also... I mean, something would be really interesting is would be to see if the detriments and the exaltations line up where... I mean, have you ever looked at this? Where, like, you know, say um, moon is exalted in Taurus. Mm -hmm. Well, is the moon in the exalting lines in the Taurus gates? A lot of the time, yeah. You see, the, yeah. You see that a lot, or, like, in Capricorn gates, Saturn is overly exalted and all those, in a bunch of, like, you know, maybe three lines in one gate sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the other interesting thing would be, I wonder if there's a difference where the sun and the moon kind of switch hit a little bit, because um, when the sun is in Libra, which is where the Venus is exalted, Venus is in Aries. Or, I mean, no, the Earth is in Aries. Sorry. Yeah. They're, they're speaking the not my language. No, well, the Earth is in Aries. <laughs> well, I guess what I'm trying to say is if Venus is earthly, is more on the feminine side, because it's a feminine archetype, then maybe that's the real reason Libra... It's an interesting question, because because when... So when Venus is in, is in Aries, yeah, it's in detriment, but that's also... We think of it usually as the sun is kind of what what determines the quality of the sign, and because we are using the Earth, which isn't used in astrology, it's a question of whether the sun matches for the masculine archetypes and the Earth for the feminine. Mm. Of course, that wasn't the case with the Moon, mm. where we saw that the Moon, which is a feminine archetype, was exalted in Taurus or is kind of represented in Taurus. Mm. So it doesn't totally fit, but mm. it's just been an interesting question there. It's interesting mm -hmm. because I, I I mean I see what you're saying. I'm also just saying because sun and earth are opposite, mm -hmm. that there's a lot more nuance mm -hmm. when we have the earth in play because it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, the Venus, it doesn't really make so, so much sense why Venus would be um, 25, which is in Aries. But then we have to see where Mars well, is. Well, he's also, also his background is in astrology too, so he's not coming from a, a blank slate of mm -hmm. uh, creating it from. A human design perspective and then adding astrology it was an astrology before he was yeah i believe well and jonah hit it on the head it's that they we don't use the earth in astrology yeah the chart so well and maybe just the it. masculine feminine if earth is feminine mm -hmm. maybe the masculine feminine switches it because every time the sun is in libra the earth is in aries and so and vice versa mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know i well, guess anyway just, yeah also i mean just the basic way it's couched all of astrology is going to be more young all of it is going to be more masculine all of it yeah, is going to be because it's all the personality side yes. exactly yeah so it's mm -hmm. art so in a way it's a little bit personality pretending to account for your right. principles wherever it's going mm -hmm. so then on the on the um other side on the venus side here uh you're in 14 uh line six which nope, is, that's the moon. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 23. 3. 23, 2. 23, 22. Okay. Which is self-defense, the uh, blue line, the need to abandon tolerance when survival is threatened. Now, blue line is something that you see in certain um, Ravi Ching lines, and um, that means it's over a course of a lifetime you get to uh, potentially learn whatever that blue line is expressing. All right, so the need to abandon tolerance when survival is threatened. Exalted the principle of preservation at its most acute, the abandonment of tolerance when individual expression is threatened. So why don't we break it down? Or do we do both or just do the positive side or the negative? No, I mean, I, I, I'm going to do Where both, Jupiter yeah. is strike, uh, in detriment, where Jupiter will strike out to preserve its integrity, 
The moon is often satisfied with just protecting itself by fending off hostility, the defense of individual expression in the face of hostility. So it's kind of saying either way it's going to uh, defend itself. And being Venus, I guess this would be a signpost. I mean, this is on the design side, so it's kind of interesting to interpret it um, that way. But That's using, hydration too, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Or um, skin complexion. Skin mm -hmm. complexion. Yeah. Hydration, yeah. it's this yeah. line. Yeah. Yeah. Liquid. yeah. But um, I guess what this would be about, so taking the context that we're taking of Gate 25, of preserving integrity and had the freedom to remain innocent. That was an interesting keynote that he kind of said, was the freedom to remain innocent. Then it's basically, yeah, it's the freedom to uh, continue to defend yourself, either through striking out or just a slightly weaker version of defense, which is just defending Well, this is where to... harmony and balance are needed, mm -hmm. right? So um, the capacity to withstand shock through innocence, the love of everything without differentiation. So how does that, you know, uh, get expressed through, you know, that? Yeah, I mean, it's really just going to be a signpost of self-defense being... Um, where you protect, I mean, it's like having... Where you need to find balance, where you need to be, but from an innocence, it's like no one's to blame. So both of these... both You the just have to do what you got to do. Yeah, both the personality and the design side are going to be compromises of finding harmony between how much do you give in to the societal conditioning that says, don't defend yourself, just put up with it, and also says, no, even if love might heal, it's not appropriate in this situation versus being able to have the freedom to stand in your integrity and innocently love to heal or innocently defend yourself. It's kind of like, that's where Venus is like, how much do we compromise? How much do we give up our freedom to remain in our integrity and maintain our, our innocence mm. versus harmonize with others, which in, entails a certain amount of having to give in to societal pressures. So society might say, hey, 59.5, you can't love. Don't love. I mean, there's so many forbidden loves throughout history. But if you're, if you're really, and, and it can't, it's, it's about harmony and compromise. You can't just be like, I will love unconditionally no matter what. It has to be like, okay, I do understand. In this situation, even if love would heal, I have to kind of allow my innocence to be curtailed a little bit and be controlled a little bit, and I have to give up some of my freedom. However, I'm not going to give up all my freedom. I'm going to harmonize, and I'm going to maintain yeah. that freedom to love who I want to love. Similarly, There's a certain balance, though, that yeah. you have, but you always have to maintain your own integrity. And, 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 and same with this self-defense is yeah. uh, there's a need to abandon tolerance when mm -hmm. survival is threatened. It can lash out when survival is threatened, or it can simply fend off the hostility with no lashing. And it's a verbal and that's going to be... It's, yeah. it's a throat gate. So okay, it's the gate yeah. of I know or I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, insist or desist, right? Or, uh, you're... That's really interesting, yeah. Like knowing, yeah, and being able to defend yourself. even And be able, to, be able to articulate that. Mm -hmm. but, but it's yeah, unconscious, yeah. so it's not like you have any real control of it, but it's about finding that voice that can express that balance, that harmony. It's interesting to see Venus is where we kind of negotiate how much freedom we're going to retain for our innocence. This is where the values keynote comes in. How much mm -hmm. are we going to give into societal values versus how much are we going to retain our own personal values? Mm -hmm. And then it's always a compromise, and you can't be 100% personal values, screw society, but you can't just give up all of your values and go along with what society tells you mm -hmm. to do. There's a negotiation there. There's a harmony that has to happen, a harmonizing between personal values and societal values. All right. Well, that was good. Then that negotiation is the movement of that channel between the two centers of I, the ego I and the G center I. That is gate 25. <laughs> oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Right, 2551, the movement of like the lower self I and the higher self I, or the capital S self and the lowercase s. Self. I love your bit about how since those used to be the same center for everyone, before we were nine centered, we all have to recreate that schism in our own lives. We all have to recreate the separation of the ego from the G because they are it is because of the seven centered world we've inherited it's very easy for us to conflate those things right mm -hmm. if you look at a seven centered chakra system they don't differentiate the G center from the ego it's just called the heart center but for us we have kind of a higher and a lower heart and when they divested from each other or diverged from each other 
there was probably what I had imagined this intense alienation that we felt mm -hmm. from ourselves where we were kind of no longer at home in our own house, so to speak, because we gained interiority and culpability mm -hmm. and all of these kinds of guilt and neuroses and, you know, the, the person of the 1900s going to Sigmund Freud with all of their neuroses mm -hmm. was not the person of the 1600s mm -hmm. going to the priest. They, the person in the 1600s might have said, I have sinned, I have done wrong, but they still hadn't fully experienced the, the their, depth their of the traje alienation. Yeah, <laughs> trajectory is the same as social value, that it's the same as, as the self as a social unit, was the same thing as the self as a cosmic concept or whatever. Right, yeah, they were, they were at one with helping the world and helping God, yeah. and then mm. we began to kind of divide and go, Oh, actually, there there is this G center, higher sense of purpose and higher love, and then there is this ego, which is my personal desire and what I want in my life for me, mm -hmm. and they are kind of at odds with each other sometimes. And how do we harmonize them? And how do we how do we negotiate that? And also, the ego and the identity by splitting create their own context that's different and new. It's a, it, it's right. not the same ego from the seven centered being. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different ego. Yeah, the seven center being didn't have ego in the same sense. I mean, yeah. they were working on it, Descartes and so on, Cogito or Gosan. Really quick, are 25 and 51 both in Aries? They are, right? Because mm -hmm. Ra is a 51 mm -hmm. 5. So that's funny that that's the Aries channel that is about the difference between the ego and the G center. Mm -hmm. That's just a funny aside. And there. the one channel I have. Yeah, right. Uh, the, the, well, you're, yeah, the channel initiation. You're one, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're single motor. A single motor <laughs> a projector. single motor projector. A top heavy projector. Splenic ego projector. Have you seen his chart? It's very top heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little rocket ship. Yeah. <laughs> Not little. It's a rocket ship. Excuse me. It's a big, it's a big rocket ship. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The size doesn't matter. Right? Okay. Um, all body graphs are the same size. Yeah, that's the all, except mine is printed very large. Um, <laughs> all right, Mars. We're going to do. All right, Mars, gate seven. So it's the, our role, our, you know, in life. Um, so one's role to lead ourselves, others, the place of our inner child either develops from immaturity to establish its role or not. Place of innocence of the inner child that can remain throughout one's life to lead. Where Mars is located in the chart, the person can appear to others to be naive and childish, but it can be this childish innocence. Hmm. Like if it's the distinction between innocence and just being a st stupid head intentionally. You know, it's, it's, I don't know. Not the, I, I, you know, there's a playfulness, a childness, an innocence. We were talking on it before we were recording about this. Um, so wherever you find your Mars, that's your role uh, that you need to lead yourself and others in, and your place of inner child. It's so funny to, yeah, it's, I mean, I, in, the keynoting I hear from Ra is usually immature energy, but then he also mentions in the Magic Square materials that um, Mars is the planet of mutation. And mutation, symbol, yeah. All mutativeness, which makes sense because it is... This eternally is like the fountain of youth that kind of maintains a youthful vigor and invigorates. And could be the key to the whole chart on the holistic side. Yeah, and yeah. it also fits, and I think Rod touched on this as well, that for the ancient Mesopotamians and Sumerians and for the, for the Chaldean tablets and so on in, in Chaldean numerology, um, Mars is the most sacred and basically was so special that they wouldn't even, it was... The, represented by the number nine, and they wouldn't even give a letter the value of nine mm. because it would be like too base to profane it mm. by saying that Mars could be represented just by a letter or something. It was kind of like this unnameable outside of the alphabet. I mean, kind of like how spirit. people have done with God and the word of God. Mm. Some people don't yeah. write it. I exactly. Mean, they, they say G-D or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. They won't. Yeah, yeah. so it's the same, same kind of exactly. premise. So... Um, Jonah, it's, it's my only fourth line. It's your only fourth my line. Only fourth line. Twenty nine four, directness, the Fix shortest. The, yeah. In detriment. In detriment. <laughs> only detriment. It, uh, I'm sorry, I just, I'm just noticing it's your only fourth line, and earlier we found out that no, basically no one is Mars to you in your card system. 
Oh, isn't that funny? Well, not no one. The king of king of spades or Mars. One in three hundred and sixty-five people. Yeah, one in three hundred and sixty-five <laughs> days of people being born are my direct Mars. However, so how, what would that I mean to anybody Mars listening here? What so would that mean? Uh, we're talking about since and, you brought uh, it up. Yeah, in the cards of destiny, also known as love cards or cards of the Magi or cards of truth. Mm. Uh, you have a relationship to the other cards depending on where you are and what we call the spread mm. and the relationship to the other cards if they're one card away from you is Mercury if they're two cards away is Venus if they're three cards is Mars and so mm. on and the card that's three cards away from me is the King of Spades which is a rare card some cards are very common like they happen you know eight times a year other cards, like the King of Spades, only happen once a year, people born on January 1st. Mm. So only people born on January 1st represent Mars to me. Mm. Uh, if they weren't born on that date, I have a different relationship to them, okay. you know, or no relationship. Um, so it's just, it's just kind of a... It's just funny that it's your only fourth that, line. Yeah, yeah it, it, is, it yeah. is funny that I just I have very little... little well, you're, you're in Gate 29, the abysmal... Uh, uh, this is the gate of saying yes... Or no. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, it is a blue line. It is in detriment. It's called directness. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Simplicity and directness all too often seen as inharmonic and aesthetically crude. Not by me, by others. Yes. My simplicity and directness is seen as crude mm. by others. Yes. Mm. The power of, yeah, because you don't see it that way. Well, I just see it as <laughs> expedient. <laughs> He's direct. Yeah. Um, the power of directness often offends others. Well, that definitely could resonate at times. Absolutely. No, this is a, a big part of... But your role life. here is to be direct. Right. Right? So when we go back to the description, you know, he's saying that you're here to lead yourself and others through that directness, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's your role, how you're going to uh, have that Mars expressed. And um, it'll it's, develop. But it's also your inner child, the innocence of the inner child, but not necessarily the, you know, from an immaturity to a to a true innocence, though. I mean, but you can, you know what I mean? Because you can, innocence, like as a motivation, you know, there's, it's just a state of, oh man, I don't know, uh, non acceptance, non attachment, acceptance. It's just, hmm. just isness in a sense, hmm. right? Well, and he's saying it'll either be able to develop its immaturity to establish its role, or it will fail in yes. being a leader hmm. uh, because of, of that, because it, it won't be able to use this immaturity. So in a way, it's like. As long as I mean, I don't have to. I don't have to civilize my crudity or whatever. It's not about that. I don't have mm -hmm. to like. This actually fits a lot with my um, Chiron and Gemini, which is learning how to be civilized, quote unquote, as well as my North Node in Gemini, moving from the uncivilized Sagittarius, seen as crude and overly direct, the arrow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Moving into Gemini, um, being knowing how to communicate and how to not ruffle feathers and all these things. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see how even the first year of the HDHD conference, it was a very crude punk aesthetic mm -hmm. in our magazine. It's not about getting rid of that aesthetic and, you know, it's not about whitewashing it with a bunch of, um, you know, making it all uh, sparkly and all, you know, and the crudeness is okay, but it can offend people. People are legitimately offended by all the sound and the noise mm. in the background of my recordings, which is why mm. I'm very conscientious of it. I'm always kind of now policing people mm. when they're moving chairs too much during a recording or making loud sounds no. because... I get. Oh. I do. <laughs> My mom used to call me Officer Dempsey growing up, so I definitely have that side. But, um, but it's you know, but it's not about that I'm going to ever get rid of that crudeness because that is part of it. It's just the refinement I, of it. Can I develop it into a form of leadership mm. where yes. I can use this directness mm. despite the fact yes. that I might offend? But I, it's still. But still, yeah. from a place of innocence and not an agenda. Yeah, it's not going to be somewhere where I'm like really contrived. People don't want to see. 
it's not contrived crudeness. I'm not like, how can I make this more punk? You know, yeah. I just am punk. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of, that's exactly. just who I am. You know, it's my childish revelry in the punk aesthetic mm -hmm. or in the DIY. We're just going to make it. It doesn't matter as long as it works, as mm -hmm. long as it's the shortest point between two lines. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to have a bunch of trappings and dressings and mm -hmm. frilliness. It can just work. Mm -hmm. It can just, let's just do it and then have a leadership from that. Well, both, yeah. both of your uh, Marses are blue lines. So that kind of works with the the progression of maturity yeah. over a, a lifetime of, of refining that. And my other Mars is a sixth line. I know yeah. we're getting close to our time here, so we better. Uh, speaking of all right, uh, real quick directness. Let's get, get direct. Let's Mark, direct. More direct. Let's finish this up and see at well, least. Well, the, yeah. Then we'll just maybe do the other we've planets. Got some time, yeah. Yeah, we right. can do the other planets and not. We don't have to go into all the examples of them. But the twelve six. It's not only the blue line, but it's a sixth line. Yeah. Which is also one that uh, you can grow into and yeah, really flowers into. in the fifties. Exactly. And skate yeah. of articulation, skate of progress, change, caution, stand still, caution, abandon. Uh, so you have, uh, it's called metamorphosis, faith in and energy applied towards change in their emergence from standstill. All right, so it's a creative transcendence that when connected to the harmonic gate 22 through the channel openness leads to successful mutation and the emergence of a new social form, the capacity to mutate and express new social forms. Or a retrograde metamorphosis that has evolved a perfected adaptation to standstill, the perfected adaptation to adaption to caution that can accept social limitations. Right, so it's either going to work and really actually really, get yeah. change to happen, or it's just going to get totally used to and adapt to the standstill of caution. So it's kind of like... Um, you know, we had COVID and we had to have some changes, like wearing masks and this and that. And then are we going to then move beyond that? It'll take some 12 sixes to figure out what the next social change is that goes beyond the mask, no mask dichotomy. Or are they just going to say, eh, I got used to it. I'll just wear a mask now. No big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or whatever. Not that that would be. Or I got used to not wearing a mask. I'm not going to ever wear a mask again if we mm -hmm. need to. But maybe there's a third way. And the faith that there is some sort of metamorphosis that can occur, mm. social change that can occur to get to this third way, whatever that is. We, we, also, we well, also you have the 12-3. And well, you, you, it, it, it's yeah. a perseverance, you know, uh, of the 29, right, mm -hmm. that says yes, it commits to something, right, and, and, and enters into it. And the 12, uh, you know, uh, of co it's also having to say yes in a way because it's it's the it's the coldest gate in the uh meanest gate in the uh, according to raw the, the uh, 12 is yeah. uh, 12 is and or i got isn't it twice isn't it one of the stop codons or it is a stop code oh, yeah. yeah but it's 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 he it says it's the coldest uh, nastiest gate I it can definitely oh my word well we both have, <laughs> we both have 12 3 and detriment which is is self-hatred it's also self -hatred, right? confession is what it's called i told you about this one and basically it's the regret See, twelve three is all about trial and, and that's error my Mars. in getting across to somebody to get something mm. to change, to get the my mutation role. across. Like, mm. I want you to be into human design, so I'm going to try to get you into human design, mm. or I'm going to, you know. And as the not self, it's just going to continue to fail and then regret saying the absolute worst thing. Why did I say that? Why did I fail so miserably at getting this mutation across? Mm. An exaggerated self hatred mm. is the twelve three. Yeah, and so that's your Mars. So that's where your leadership is. Yeah, yeah there and uh, in symmetry and gate fifty one and the uh, gate of shock. And both are detriment. Both of your Mars are detriments. Yeah, mm -hmm. shocking and uh, self loathing through articulation and shock. Right. Yeah, there you go. No, you get rid of the self loathing. Let's yeah, exactly. That's one where when I that's the maturity. When I first read it, I recognized it completely, and now I'm like, yeah, more like self acceptance. You know, yeah. self acceptance that I said the wrong thing, and I don't just beat myself up over it. Of oh, I I would really put my foot in my mouth, and I wish I hadn't said that. And yeah, I have none. Oh, I have one this morning. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So I had it. They kept repeating something that it was just ridiculous for me, and I just it was contradicting something that I had said earlier. So I was like, and I caught myself doing it. And I'm like, well, I didn't really beat myself. I was like, all right, stop, stop. All right, I see what's going on, but uh, no, yeah. I'm over it. But you know, twelve three makes mistakes in our articulation, and then trying to mutate the other. 
Mm. So and that's okay. We have to just or they find new ways of doing it. Right. See, so I th I think that the third line in, in, in articulating is about finding, discovering the way that I can connect with you or you or you. And it's through that process that I've found certain things that don't work and certain things that do work, right? right? So uh, my ability to, um, it's also analysis. It's a self-analysis, but it's an analyzing, you know, you're seeing. Um, I think that, and it's, all, well, I also put it in that it's in the, the fifth color, but... Um, I, you know, that's part of my leadership is also the shock, I think, or it is kind of, or have people to be able to adapt to shock in a sense, uh, or seduce them through shock. That tendency in seeking the core to harmonize with one shock only to be overwhelmed by the next, hmm. or the egoism to indulge in victory and lose vigilance. Hmm. But I mean, again, that's the I Ching for the kind of homogenized not self. It's not yeah. that you're going to do that, it's more part no, of I your, have done it. But, yeah. And part of the development of your immaturity into leadership is your ability to enjoy a certain... You don't need to always be vigilant, and it's okay if you get overwhelmed by the next shock because you can still mm -hmm. survive that one. Right. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like... It's just, yeah, it's just being able to withstand shock and being able to lead through a certain childlike, yeah, okay, well, I withstood the first one. As you know, that that, that line in, in Detriment, I think of the person who was like, we made it, we made it. It was in like that movie you watched last night. They're, they're in the car. We watched a G Gerard Butler, what's it called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The it was great. Anyway, and they're driving. London has fallen. Yeah, it's, it says London has fallen. Awesome movie. Incredible. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, you know, like a. It's almost like Metal Gear Solid, the, wow. the movie. Cool. And it's in London, and they make it through. They're in this car. The guy's protecting the U.S. president from <laughs> terrorists. And, they, you know, and they, they make it. They're like, we made it. We made it. And then right then they get T-boned. Just nailed. Yeah. They, like, just flip in the air and go mm -hmm. flying in their car. And that's exactly what this is. Yeah. It's like, but they adapted, and they overcame it. Exactly. And so there's... <laughs> yeah, they example. dealt with that shock and moved on to the next one. Yeah. And then they're, the next one. They're, like, one. showboating. And then the next one. They had a lot of shocks in that. Um, yeah, exactly. So that was, so, a, that was a very 51-5 in depth. And I think human design in general is very shocking. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? It's something also, at gate 12, caution, right? Uh, or, uh, you know, there's, do I articulate this about you as I? Or don't I not? Is this the correct yeah. invitation? Social caution, exactly. Is, yeah. You know, is this the right place to talk about this? My mm -hmm. role, where I am, who I am, what I do? We got a third line you of detriment, so we're just going to try and see. <laughs> if it doesn't work, then we just doesn't go, work, oh, I'm oh. adapt. So that shock of that person going, what the hell is he talking about? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or not. Exactly. You know, I think earlier on, earlier in my process, I, it, is, it would be more relevant in a negative way, or quote-unquote negative way. Um, well, let's look at some of these guys. Okay. Let's do, Hold on, let's go on to the next planet. Yeah. And we'll go into, all right, Jupiter, gate 46, the love of the body. Of wow. Course. Yeah. yeah. And you know how when you go on vacation, you always gain a few pounds because the experiential is associated with fats mm. and just, you just kind of going through emotional process, going through a breakup, you eat ice cream or going, you know, on the dates with people. The expansiveness you know, of it? Or you yeah. I'm just saying, Jupiter well, it's a very Jupiter. It's a right. Jupiter theme. Well, so yeah. some people might not know that online. Right, right, right. So, but you know, Jupiter is said to be a very, yeah, an expansive, uh, when people have Jupiter right. transits, they sometimes gain a few pounds and so on. Ju well, I thought you were saying Jupiter travel and then 46, love of the body and then fats, abstract experience. Yeah, they all kind of fit. It just yeah. makes a yeah. lot of sense. So he right. says here, the body is the place of serendipity, not outside oneself. So the body is the place of serendipity. Makes all sense. right. Uh, a very physical position. The form does what it does, as it is the instrument to experience life. So where the body is the place of serendipity, a very physical position. Mm -hmm. The form does what it does what? It does what it does, as it's the instrument to experience the life. It's also, so, yeah. I was just going to say that brings up a question that comes up in my sessions a lot on the design side, design Jupiter, the aura, aura right? So how do you uh, help your aura? Doesn't How is your aura anything other than what emerges out of the rest Well, it of would be design? what it would be, but it's resonance or harmony to whether it's the environment or the brain, mm -hmm. or it doesn't. 
Right. And if right. the body isn't being nourished, the aura is going to be really weak and scraggly and staticky. And, right. Well, yeah. so that's what I mean. I see the aura so much as an emergent property. If you have to, like, is the only way to treat the aura to treat everything else? Yeah, I think, well, what he alluded to first was anything on the um, design side had to be grounded or had to be really, to made sure the earth was taken care of. Oh, yeah, right. 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 Start there. In order yeah. to make sure that everything else is working well. And the earth is actually tied into the brain, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. in, in terms of the uh, sun earth being right. tied into the, uh, the brain variable. Yeah, and the nervous system. And stuff. The nervous yeah. system, yeah. yeah. So, um, I don't know where Jonah. Jonah. No, oh, my Jupiters. Yeah, my Jupiters are. One's and nine ones, and one, let's go design first. Yeah. Machismo. Well, that's my aura. I have a macho aura. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool. Holy shit, if he doesn't say so himself. Um, yeah, it's a blue line. Uh, which is the indiscriminate display of power. The yeah. great malfic, whose machismo, unfortunately, is invariable, backed up by power. This is an exaltation only in that it is the natural and not contrived. Only that it is not in natural and not contrived. Yeah. The display of power that defines any role. Yeah, so when my aura is healthy and when my um, body is healthy and so on, I just naturally display power. But it's not contrived. It's mm -hmm. not that I'm thinking, oh, that person took my apple. I'm going to get my apple back from them. They just take it. I just take it back. Mm -hmm. Don't take my apple. Mm -hmm. and I, don't, you know, I don't even say it. I just grab it back. Or I just give them a look. Like, what are you doing messing with my apple? You know? yeah. it's, not, it's not a contrived thing. And then when, I'm, when I'm unhealthy, perhaps, it's... A reasoned and calculated display, the communication of disinformation, the calculated display of power in order to define the role. Yeah. See, so it, yeah. And, you know, I think that's another, you know, there's certain words that come in here that, yeah, that really stand out. But, um, so what do you think about this in terms of that? Oh, yeah. No, I've seen that, and I, I mean, if you have any comments on that as well, you, you know me, I mean, you guys... Hey, this is unconscious, so you guys know him. Yeah, you probably see it more than I do. Yeah, but, you would know it better. But I maybe. have I have caught myself in the past, um, you know, basically trying to, trying to get power through, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to calculate this, I'm going to, you know, kind of like, if it's not, if... Basically, if it doesn't just happen out of response instantly in the moment, then it's initiating and it's mm -hmm. contrived, mm -hmm. and it's trying to reestablish the power I've lost in a situation. Mm -hmm. So it's saying, the next time I see that person, I'm going to let them know what's mm -hmm. what. I'm going to confront them about this. I'm going to whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a very, it's probably when that's happening, my aura is in a very shaky, weak place, whereas when I have a very... I mean, yeah, you've probably seen, you've seen both. You know me longer than most of my friends. Yeah, isn't there a thing with Gate 34, maybe it's the line one or something, something foundational about it, how it's like power is only power if it's used for good or something like that? There's like this relationship between 34 and like goodness, mm. you know, and that's like, and what, and so uh, anyway, that's just an interesting, like, because we also associate Jupiter with a sort of like goodness and generosity and whatever, so... I can see that being sort 34 of line power. one is uh, the bully. The bully, okay. And the I'm discriminate surprised. use of power. The less negative, the resort to power as a manifestation of frustration. So it's even speaking generator, you know, it is the, the power motor of the sacral. Okay, maybe. Uh, the, <laughs> the energy to display power as a response to frustration. Pluto detriment, the comeuppance. That is inevitable destiny of the bully, the ever-present risk of retaliation to power displays. So the, the first line of any uh, gate is the foundation, right? right? So the foundation of gate 34 is the bully. <laughs> no, it makes sense. Well, it's about, uh, you know, using power and then basically getting a comeuppance from that. But the fifth line is what its kind of practical application is, mm -hmm. and that is to destroy. And mm -hmm. so that's all about, fifth line is annihilation. I don't have that one, but that is what power is here to do. Mm -hmm. And then to return power. 34-3, yes, all right. And, um, and then, but also I was thinking, it, it, the place is so important, 
right? It's a place. Mm -hmm. So where you're at is going to impact yeah. <laughs> how this gets played out, how you are being seen. If you're in the correct place, it's probably going to come out a certain quality versus in an incorrect place. Mm -hmm. So it's very physical in the sense that where you are located maybe will accentuate that. And your what's that fit color? So that doesn't you don't even you don't even have you don't have resonance with the uh, or um, or harmony. No, I have resonance to Mercury and to um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> on the design side. Oh, and I guess my um, uh, Uranus on the design side. But yeah, and then the other thing I would say is just we always have the keynote of the Jupiter's law, mm. right? Mm. Or is so Saturn's where we're punished. Mm -hmm. Jupiter is kind of the law that we must obey. Mm -hmm. So if we don't obey that law, we're punished in our Saturn. And that's kind of one of the, the classic keynotes Ra came up with in the Black Book. Mm -hmm. And so having the law of having to basically display power in some way. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, my nine uh, one, which is sensibility. But sensibility. yeah, we, we don't have to. Okay, we can look at mine, and then we can look at right. look at Mike's and Richard's. But, uh, okay. Or do we move on to the next case? We can move just move on. on to the next one. Let's just do it. All right. Uh, Jupiter, then Saturn, which is gate 10, behavior of self. Um, oh, interesting that gate 10 is Saturn. I mean, that the love of makes self a lot of sense. Is Capricorn. Oh, like shit. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Capricorn, it's restrictive in certain ways. So this is the, the place we're born to become an authority. So he doesn't see it as a um, punishing planet. He doesn't believe that at all. Yeah. Um, he sees it as the place where we're born to become an authority, developing an authority via 30 year cycles, or 20 and a half, 29 years, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Saturn, Saturn cycles. cycles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with each cycle having its own individual behavior. So. With e yeah, so the first uh, 30 years, you know, uh, well, also Saturn is individual behavior is its own law. Your behavior, it's your law. So the first 30 years is about education, hmm. getting educated in that process. I, I think I got it. So it's not punishment, but it is sentence. Because here's your 30 years. <laughs> here's your 30 <laughs> years. Here's 30 years of having your to be authority. Your yeah. to go to school <laughs> for 30 years. Pound some rocks. Yeah. All right, go learn. Learn and come back when you learn something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if your parents or people back in the day, you go pound rocks. <laughs> um, so the first 30. Yeah, then the second 30 is the warrior. So this is where you're actually... Dealing with life mm -hmm. in a very warrior kind of yeah, battlefield all, of life. All four of us are warriors right yeah. now. We're all in our battlefield phase. Yes. And then the third is the chief. The third 20, you know, it's where you have that experience and wisdom that you have the potential to share. So wherever you have your Saturn and what that means, mm -hmm. that is where you can find your authority. Or, or or authoritative behavior yeah. or your voice or outer authority outer authority yeah no, mine yeah. is twenty eight too shaking hands with the devil right. you would like to have any bedfellow to accomplish something you do yeah well right yeah, no it's true I, I I get in this conversation uh, with uh, James Alexander about HDHD mm -hmm. and my responsibility as a yeah, yeah. leader of HDHD or an authority in HD to sort of police who speaks there. And to keep out Pop HD. And I'm like, no, I, I would let Pop HD. I probably wouldn't give a stage to Richard Mason of Sidereal HD only because he has actively, willfully spread misinformation. Right. But I would definitely give a stage to who are some of the Pop HD people? Um, Jenna Zoe? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Jenna Zoe, if you're watching, you are welcome to talk at HDHD. <laughs> it's this September uh, or any year that you want to come. It would be wonderful to have Jenna Zoe there. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Maybe that's my 28, too. Uh, but but we've, but, but we've looked at mine a lot. Let's. Uh, oh, uh, well, yeah. Well, that's, okay. my 28, that's my 28, too, there. There is your Saturn. Oh. Distasteful alliance. That's the blue line. Oh. <laughs> a means, however unsavory, that is justified by its end. When the game turns to a struggle, the intuitive acceptance of any, any alliance to win. Yep. 
So that's John X. Neo Nazis. So that's expressed through the behavior. You know, that's your behavior. You know, that's the the love of self uh, uh, is a uh, anti mundane love gate. Uh, yeah. Or it's uh, love of behavior. Uh, ten, behavior. yeah. You're talking about ten, yeah. It's both. It's the only one that's mundane and transcendent. Transcendent, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. And, um, or, you know, the uh, the anxiety engendered by sacrificing higher principles when there is no guarantee of success. The risk in sacrificing principles when there is no guarantee of victory. So at my worst, when I fail to really step into my authority or when I fail as an authority, I've made alliances without any guarantee of success. Mm. So I've basically given up principles, but there is no end. There, they, the means didn't justify the end. Mm. They didn't kind of end up being overall benefit. Mm. Because if I am successful and I'm an authority in that way, then, then I will have, people will go, well, yeah, you know, he, he got in bed with the oil money, but hey, that oil money sure paid for some great HD conferences. <laughs> so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or well, you, you, yeah, you definitely have the. Um, uh, you don't have the gate, but it's funny. You have the rationalization uh, of the, the making. It's, it's his rationalization. But it's the dots that are connecting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and let's connect these dots. Right it's his rationalization season. We were talking a lot about rationalization recently. Also, Saturn's the Reaper, and it wants its yield. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. To get, All right. get paid, Saturn. You have to pay, pay the piper, pay the reaper. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, and then you would have uh, fifty line two determination, uh, the strength and purpose that can enjoy overcoming adversity to achieve its goals, the strength derived from maintaining one's values in the face of opposition or condition. How funny! I maintain my values while allying with anybody, which seems like I'm giving up all of my values or principles. But but it's not because it's part of who you're. Yeah, that's your. They're both design. second lines, so my authority is completely natural. And natural, and I don't really. And your Achilles heel. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Well, no, seriously, right? Mm -hmm. So that's also where you're prone to be, you know, um, injured. Absolutely. Yeah, I think those are my only second lines. Um, or the discomfort with adversity that may lead to determined withdrawal, lack of strength where values are threatened by opposition or condition. My Saturns are my only second lines. Yeah. Mm, crazy. Yeah, that's interesting. And that's so 50 is the loss, mm -hmm. right? It's the, the gate of the loss, yeah. the gate of the cauldron. You know, it's where the, 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 the um, origin of intelligence, as Rob would say, right? Oh. And, so, um, you know, the 50 uh, being, that, uh, uh, being that place where you become an authority about the law. What's the law? And responsibility. I'll either yeah. be responsible, responsible and I'll establish We have the authority, resources to do this. Or I'll be irresponsible and I'll lose my authority. Mm. Because there's no guarantee that you become an authority. A lot and of that's based don't. on your behavior of self. Mm -hmm. Which is the tenth gate that how this is representing? Myself? Yeah. How do I? Yeah. How do you? How do you conduct yourself? Will determine how that plays out. And if I really love myself, I will treat other people appropriately, and I will conduct myself with composure around them, mm. and so on. Because otherwise, I'm actually hurting myself. Mm. It's the gate mm. of self-love. Right. Interesting. I mean, the person who doesn't love themselves doesn't care enough to not step on the tail of tigers in the jungle. They don't change their behavior depending on where they are. They show up in the jungle in flip-flops and shorts and get bit by a snake or step on the tail of a tiger because they're careless. Right. They don't care enough about themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't love themselves mm -hmm. enough to adjust their behavior. Mm -hmm. And same thing if I go into... Uh, you know, uh, a formal meeting, and I'm, hey guys, how's it going? And just kind of don't don't adjust and don't show a certain level of respect and formality right. and concern, then uh, you know my authority will be undermined, and it'll be all a result of that. How's this connecting for you? Do you feel any uh, sense? Uh, this makes sense for your gates. I don't have your chart in front of me. That's yeah, right. yeah. Um, personality Saturn fifty four four, which and That's so right. I see. Um, the, since I've been 30, that being the battlefield now, being the, the, the how I'm stepping into like warrior in 54-4 and like having to um, see all the like micro interactions we have each other as sort of like having this like 
how that is like a cosmic negotiation of power in a weird way that like all these tiny little slights and stuff and all our little conduct our self-conduct with each other um secretly feeds something way beyond our like comprehension you know like just the way you say hello to the to the milkman in the morning or whatever can have all these effects beyond anything that you could ever notice Mm. 54 being both the root of all ambition for material transformation and ultimately fueling entrepreneurship and capitalism and all of that, and also being just mundane interaction. Yeah, exactly. Mundane and so the fourth line, which is enlightenment and darkening. The mystery line. <laughs> Here, in the most mystical of positions, there is neither an exaltation nor a detriment, for in truth they are the same. Uh, no exaltation. The alpha and the omega, the end and the beginning, there is no description possible. Each planet will manifest this energy uniquely with absolutely no guarantee that its effects will even be perceived. However, the potential is always there. The fuel for transformation at its purest level. No polarity. No specific planetary accent. No detriment. The Alpha and the Omega. The end and the beginning. There's no description possible. That seems like a good place to end this. Uh, <laughs> we well, can get yeah, to the outer planets, planets next time. The outer yeah. planets, the next three, <laughs> yeah. are, are interesting too in this take. So I, to wrap this so far up, mm. um, Martin's take is pretty interesting to me when you dig a little deeper and see, because he does have so much experience both astrologically and human design-wise, um, that... I found his insights interesting. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh my word. These are Yeah, and even even with like I'm with you, like why would Venus be represented by an Aries gate and so on? There's some kind of confusing parts, but I mean it also just adds to my desire to then my desire for someone to solve it for me. <laughs> because I don't, we can, I don't we have can the try to get Martin on, the, Martin on there and oh say, ask him that, that question. Would be incredible. That would be, you know what I mean? Martin, if you're watching, we want you <laughs> at the experience to be in the future. And in the future, Calls. we would love for you to join and be a speaker. And you have my email, Martin. Yeah. yeah. So, well, thank you. Thank you for hosting, Mike. And uh, thanks. For, yes, Mike, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thanks thank for, for sharing, sharing this with us. Yeah. I know yeah, Jonah, all of a sudden, we were just talking, people, and then Jonah said, let's record this. <laughs> yeah, I was in the other room. I heard a really good conversation. I came in and said, I'm initiating. Just so you know, you know face yourself. You're, not, res- to you're not initiate. You responded to what we were talking about. Yeah. And then you came in and decided that it was worth recording. And I, I, said, I, yes. I did make the sound, ooh, first. <laughs> that was my, that was you my did initial. respond. <laughs> That's a pretty okay. Wow, these they guys sound really smart in going. there. Yeah, we better get in there. Let's uh, let's get this out there. Well, thanks all, right. all and until uh, next time. Till next time, bye, people.